Having walked through the Fourier transform, the discrete time Fourier transform, and the basics of sampling theory, we're now finally at the point where we can talk about the practical implementation. The transform, the discrete Fourier transform, that is discrete both in time and in frequency, which is the version that can be implemented numerically on a computer. This is the primary workhorse. Well, technically it's the fast Fourier transform, which is an implementation, a highly efficient implementation of the DFT. But this algorithm's idea is the workhorse that is present in almost every digital system in existence, from your phone, to your monitors, to your computers, to anything that deals with signals or data or images, everything is performing a DFT or an inverse DFT. That's how fundamental these are to the operation of, of data and signals in our, in our world. So what is the equation? for the DFT. The DFT is going to be, again, right, something that's going to convert a function into its frequency domain space. And instead of it being a function of omega that's continuous, instead we have an index, k we'll call it. Because now not only are we moving, not only have we discretized time, right, time has been sampled, now even the frequencies themselves are being binned and marched across. So we can't just put an arbitrary frequency anymore. We only have frequency bins, and that's directly related to the number of samples that we are dealing with, and it's related to the Nyquist frequency. We'll unpack this in a moment. This is now going to be a vector, and it's going to be a vector that's going to be f, and we'll still call this t, but again, I'm going to subscript it because this is a vector. And we're going to multiply this by e to the negative, now instead of j, but it's going to be oops, j and it's going to be 2 pi over n times k times t. This 2 pi over n is similar to omega, but this 2 pi represents, this 2 pi k is very similar to omega. But now we're dealing with 2 pi because this n here represents the number of signals, the number of samples in our vector that, we've, that we're starting to, that we're going to be using to pass through the DFT. Again, I'll, uh, this will make a little more sense. We still have t. t will go away. We're going to end up with a vector. So this is f of t. And we're basically taking the t-indexed point, and we are going to sum all of this. I forgot to write the summation, didn't I? Let's come back here and write the summation. We have to sum all of this from t equals 0 to t equals n minus 1. That's not a good n minus 1. Let's rewrite that. n minus 1. What's going on here is that we are taking some underlying vector. So again, we don't even have a continuous signal anymore. We just have our sampled sets. So it's just like the discrete time uh, Fourier transform where we have sampled data points, but now we're explicitly talking about very, very clear numerical operations. We have a vector. This is going to be our f. And our vector is going to have values in it. It's going to have f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, dot, 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 f of n minus 1, well, I guess it's going to be f of n minus 2. And f of n minus 1. So there are n points in our vector, right, starting at 0. It's important to start at 0 for the math to work out. 
Starting at f of zero, going to f of n. These are just these are just numbers. They're just numbers. They represent the values of our signal sampled at some given frequency. I haven't told you what that frequency is yet, but it's important to know what it is because that will impact um, the considerations of what the Nyquist frequency is when you pass it through. But fundamentally, the DFT actually doesn't care what the frequent sampling frequency is. It will simply give you something in terms of two pi, and it's your job to sort of map that back into the frequency of interest. And when we're done with all this, we're going to get a new vector, f, that's been transformed, where this is now f of 0 and f of 1 and f of 2, dot, 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 and f of n minus 2 and f of n minus 1. And these are going to be vector points that represent different frequency bins of interest. And they will go, they will span from DC all the way out to the Nyquist frequency. Now I'm not gonna, in this video, explain uh, exactly what those bins are here because it's a little more complicated. It's not purely linear. Um, but understand that if there are n points here, there are n points that come out in here. But remember that the, the Fourier transform is limited to the Nyquist frequency. And so then only roughly half of these points are going to be unique and informative because the other half are going to represent the negative frequency about a component of that, right? The DFT is still uh, like any other Fourier transform, where it requires right twice the sampling in order to get because it's got to span both sides of the frequency space, and so these points actually correlate one set to the positive end. The other end is the conjugates, which represent the freak with the negative frequencies, and then there's the Nyquist frequency that may or may not exist and the DC value. So if endpoints go in, endpoints come out, and you're those that will tell you something, uh, that will give you the frequencies uh, of interest in now bins as opposed to point frequencies. So each of these points represents some bin of frequencies that 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 value represents, and not any point frequency. Because again, you've now sampled not just in time by sampling, but you're now sampling explicitly you're iterating in bins of frequencies that's why it's discrete and because this is discrete in both time and frequency it can now be actually uh, uh, performed numerically by a computer extremely powerful technique and so the plots of this are not that different it's just individual points as opposed to co continuous functions if we take a look at this right and we have again omega, then instead of some continuous line that I will draw that I did, for example, for the DTFT case for the discrete time Fourier transform, where we had copies, there's no copies here anymore. Instead, what we have is just a series of points. And it will look something like this. There'll be some DC value, then there'll be a value here, 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 and here, and here, and again, It'll be symmetric, so there'll be points here and here and here and here and here. And this is supposed to be symmetric, so that's just my, my poor art. And that's what's going on, right? This is what the ultimate graph will look like of the, of the discrete Fourier transform uh, in a similar vein of what the ones that we saw before. Where, again, you can't go to arbitrary, arbitrary frequencies anymore. You only have the binned values and each point represents some, some range of frequencies for, each, for where, where it represents. Again, here we're plotting the magnitude of f of k. This is a magnitude plot. Because again, these, can be, these are complex. And that means there's both a magnitude and a phase, and that phase will tell you where the phase of that cosine or sine is in that, in that space. That's the basics of the discrete time for the discrete Fourier transform. This is the workhorse of of signal processing, and it, it's extremely efficient. They've, there's very very optimal ways of of, uh, of calculating this. That's called the fast Fourier transform, which is the one that's most commonly used. 
um, and it, it can perform this operation in a very optimized manner so that it is deployed quite widely. In subsequent videos, we'll take a closer look at the Fourier transform, both in continuous space to see if we can build a stronger, uh, stronger set of intuition behind exactly what it's doing when it wraps around this, I, this E to the I space. And then we'll also look at a practical implementation on, with some hands-on work looking at the, D, at, the, at the FFT function itself to see if we can better understand what it means when it transfers a set of time series values, right? This is time and this is frequency. When it converts from time to frequency in that, in that FFT function.